What do we truly know about our ancient ancestors and the incredible things they created? The answer to that question is not as much as we like to think we do. None of us were around thousands of years ago to ask our ancestors how and why they did the things they did. So our understanding of history is mostly guesswork. Guessing can still be fun though, so let's take our best guess at the origins of these incredible archaeological finds. Let's start off with the discovery of a so-called ghost ship in the Baltic Sea. It's a discovery that happened completely by accident. There are thought to be up to 100,000 wrecks at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, an area that covers almost 250,000 square miles. There are a fair few 21st and 20th century vessels down there, but the oldest date back to the Mesolithic era. The wreck now known as the Ghost Ship was found in 2003 when a TV documentary crew tried to locate the wreck of a Swedish reconnaissance plane that vanished in 1952. They never did find their plane, but the shipwreck showed up during a sonar scan. It's 85 feet long, 26 feet wide, and would have had a capacity of around 280 metric tons. Based on its design, it was probably built during the 17th century as a merchant ship. It's most likely a Dutch vessel known as a flute, but that hasn't yet been proven. Thousands of Dutch merchant ships sailed across the Baltic Sea during the 17th century, and not all of them sailed under the Dutch flag. It's been suggested that the wreck might be that of the Vasa, which was made by Dutch shipbuilders, but sailed under the flag of Sweden. Almost 20 years later, we're still not sure whether that's right. There's a greater focus on archaeology in Egypt at the moment than there has been in several decades, and that focus is producing remarkable results. In January 2022, a joint Egyptian-Italian archaeological mission confirmed the discovery of a Greco-Roman tomb close to Aswan. Within the tomb, the team found no fewer than 20 mummies. The tombs are beneath the mausoleum of Aga Khan, which was controversially built in 1956 directly on top of an ancient necropolis. It's thought that as many as 300 ancient tombs may have been damaged or destroyed in the process. The identities of the 20 people in this tomb are thus far unknown. A plaque found close to the tomb's eastern wall bears the name Nicostratos, but archaeologists think that the plaque was moved from its original location by tomb raiders many centuries ago. The tomb as a whole probably dates back 2,100 years. This could be the tomb of Nicostratos and his family, or it could be nothing to do with anyone of that name. The fact that these people were mummified and buried in a tomb in this way suggests that they were of elevated social standing, but probably not connected to royalty. How did a Swiss ring watch get inside a sealed Ming Dynasty tomb? That's a question that's been puzzling archaeologists ever since the ring was found in 2008, and they're no closer to a conclusive answer now than they were back then. The tiny watch was already inside the tomb of Shang-Chi when it was opened. Of that, there is no doubt. It can't possibly belong to the same era as the person buried in the tomb because it has the word Switzerland engraved on its back. Switzerland didn't even exist until 1848. The tomb was sealed in the 17th century and had never been touched until its 2008 reopening. There seemed to be only two possible explanations. One is that the watch belonged to a tomb raider who dropped it inside the tomb after breaking in, stealing nothing, and leaving no trace of their presence. The second is that it was somehow dragged into the tomb by a burrowing rodent. Neither explanation seems to be particularly plausible, but how else could the watch have got here? We're ruling out the idea of time travel, so maybe the rodent explanation is the best of two bad options. At some point in Costa Rica's distant past, making stone spheres seems to have been a national preoccupation. There are well over 700 of the stones in the country, some of which weigh 16 tons and measure more than 8 feet in diameter. It would be easy to dismiss the stones as concretions, 
a way in which stone spheres can form naturally. But that would be every bit as ignorant as it was easy. These spheres have been ground, pecked, and fractured using artificial means. They've even been polished to a shine. Nobody knows when they were made, but it's reasonable to assume that they were around before the Spanish arrived. That means they could have been created by the native Chibchan tribes. The Chibchan lived in spherical houses, so it stands to reason that they also made spherical monuments, even if we're not sure what their reasoning might have been. No serious attempt to study the stones was made until the 1940s. By that point, most of them had been picked up and moved elsewhere to be used as garden ornaments, and so their provenance had been lost. When our next set of artifacts was first discovered, they were thought to be ancient scepters. A more recent study, which was completed in January 2022, suggests that they might actually be very long drinking straws used by Bronze Age people to share beer 5,000 years ago. The tube-shaped objects, which are made of gold and silver, were found inside a burial mound in the Caucasus more than a century ago. Some of them have bull figurines on their stems, which at least partially explains why they were mistaken for scepters. The methods available to modern scientists weren't available to the people who found them. If they were, they might have noticed barley starch granules inside the stems. That proves that the tubes were used for drinking, and makes them similar to drinking straws depicted in Sumerian artwork 5,000 years ago. Inside the objects, which are known as the mycop tubes, are metal strainers that filter out impurities. It's thought, but not proven, that large-scale beer drinking was reserved for important funerals. Even if that isn't true, the mycop tubes are easily the oldest drinking straws in the world. Sticking with the theme of recent discoveries, this 4,000-year-old stone board game was found in the remains of a Bronze Age settlement in Oman in January 2022. The discovery comes from the valleys of the northern Hajar range of mountains, which is one of the parts of the country least explored by archaeologists. The artifact has been identified as a board game because the cup holes and fields marked on its surface are similar to ancient games that have been found in India in the past. It's likely to be a fireside game and would have been played using shells and sticks or bones. Owning such a game would likely have been a status symbol at the time, and the game itself might have been used for more than just fun. Some historians believe that our ancient ancestors used board games as a means of divination. The layout of the as-yet-unidentified game is similar to that of Chaturanga, an ancient game that eventually evolved to become chess. We might never know how it was played, but we wonder whether it caused as many arguments among families and friends as Monopoly does today. Rome is such an ancient city that almost any construction project results in the discovery of artifacts from the past. In early January 2022, one such construction project turned up this remarkable 2,000-year-old dog statue. Professional archaeologists were summoned to the scene, which is beneath the Via Latina. That's one of the oldest surviving streets in the entire city. The expanded dig resulted in the discovery of three tombs, and an intact funerary urn to go with the dog. The ancient Romans sometimes used terracotta sculptures as drainage systems, including chiseled holes that allowed water to pass through them and run away elsewhere. The dog is made from the same baked ceramic material that was often used for such purposes, but doesn't contain any holes, and so can't have served that purpose. It might have been nothing more than a decorative feature for the tomb, or perhaps a gift for the deceased. It's considered an unusual piece because it seems to be wearing a collar, and also clasps an unidentified object between its paws. The breed of the dog can't be identified, and could easily be a breed that no longer exists today. There's little doubt that we're missing out on countless important archaeological artifact discoveries because they're trapped inside shipwrecks at the bottom of the sea. That makes them difficult to get to, but specialist teams manage it occasionally. The Israeli Antiquities Authority 
made it to the site of two ancient shipwrecks off the coast of Caesarea in December 2021 and were rewarded with the discovery of a whole treasure trove of artifacts. The finds are between 600 and 1,700 years old and include a ship's bell, smashed pieces of the anchors, and a smattering of personal possessions, including this stunning Roman gemstone ring. The ring is amazingly well preserved and is considered rare because the carving on its green gemstone is that of an early Christian symbol known as the Good Shepherd. It depicts a tunic-wearing shepherd carrying a sheep on his shoulders. This is one of the earliest widely used symbols in all of Christianity. The ship is thought to have sunk for unknown reasons while making its way to Caesarea from Italy and is still partially buried in silt on the seabed. There might still be more precious items trapped down there. The old Krogan man did not meet a pleasant or peaceful end. That's one of the very few things we know about him with any degree of certainty. His remains were found in an Irish bog in 2003, but he met his violent demise about 2,000 years earlier. It's possible that he was a victim of human sacrifice, but his pattern of wounds isn't consistent with sacrificial practices. The old Krogan man was about 25 when he died, but at six feet tall, he would have been far older than most of his peers. That might even have been the reason why he was targeted and attacked in such a savage way. This unfortunate individual was decapitated and then cleaved in two before being thrown into the bog. His sudden death might have been a major event at the time because all signs point to the idea of him being a person of significant social standing. His nails were short and well manicured and the contents of his stomach reveal that he ate mainly wheat, meat, and buttermilk. He was also wearing a decorative leather band around one of his arms. The hill above the bog is known to have been used for the coronation of Irish kings in ancient times, so he might even have been a king killed by his own people. Are the Dropa Stones genuine archaeological artifacts or a well-put-together hoax? We'll never know because the artifacts have been lost. They were allegedly found by a doctor called Chi Pu Tai while he was walking in China's Bayan Kara Ula Mountains in 1938. The drawings he made and photographs he took of them make them look like vinyl records, but he can't have been inspired by vinyl records because they weren't invented until 10 years later. While examining the stones with the aid of a magnifying glass, the doctor noticed that the grooves in their surface contained tiny hieroglyphs. He wasn't an expert in hieroglyphs, so he sent the stones to a colleague in the hope they could be translated. According to him, that's when the stones disappeared. They're mentioned as being held in the archives of a museum elsewhere in China in 1974, but the museum later denied ever having them without explaining why their records said otherwise. Without that confirmation, the only person who ever saw the Dropa Stones with their own eyes was Dr. Chi Pu Tai, and so we only have his word for it that they ever existed at all. Here's another discovery that's proved to be controversial. In July 2020, archaeologists working in Mexico claimed to have found almost 2,000 stone artifacts, including stone tools, inside Chicojite Cave. The cave is in Mexico's Astillero Mountains. While finding old stone tools inside a cave once occupied by humans isn't unusual, the supposed age of these tools has raised eyebrows. According to the archaeologists that found them, they're more than 30,000 years old. That doesn't sit well with the established narrative of American history. We know that the Clovis people lived here 15,000 years ago, but they're supposed to have been the first human occupants of the North American continent. If there were people inside this cave more than 15,000 years before that, the Clovis people wouldn't have been the first culture to live here, and probably won't have been the second, third, or fourth either. That's why the dating of the tools is so important and such a hot topic among historians and scientists. If the age can be verified, which will require significantly more testing, the entire history of the Americas 
will have to be torn up and thrown out of the window. When you're searching for a pair of objects, there are few things worse than only finding one of them with no sign of the other. Archaeologists in Norway experienced that frustration a few years ago when they found a single prehistoric ski on the side of a mountain. In October 2021, after years of searching, they finally found the matching ski. The gap between the discoveries was seven years. Both skis were found on the side of Mount Diggervarden, which is giving up its hidden artifacts one at a time because the snow and ice that's covered it for centuries is melting. Hunting tools, clothing, and Viking swords have also been found on the side of the mountain in recent years. The skis are roughly 1,300 years old, but the ice has done such a good job of preserving them that you could easily believe they were made within the last century. Even the foot binding of the more recently discovered ski is perfectly intact. There are signs that both skis were repaired more than once in the past, so they were likely well-loved and well-used by their owner. Whether that owner used them for hunting or merely for traveling is a matter of some conjecture. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!